understand that uh, impersonal Brahman is nothing because we appreciate the form and qualities of Krishna. And liberation is automatically achieved because the devotee destroys all of his karmas by the end of a shakti and in Baba self destroys a hankar. So therefore, he's actually liberated. <laughs> so he achieves the effective liberation within Baba. At the same time, he realizes the Supreme Lord. So therefore, liberation is considered insignificant at that point. Okay, the fourth quality, Sudurlava, rarely attained. This also manifests in Bhava. Hmm? So, we have to go through the process of Sadhana Bhakti and going through uh, Anartha Nuvirti Nisharuchi Asakti, and then we get Bhava. Uh, so, it's not that we simply get Bhava, we have to go through a particular process. Uh, so, that is, makes it rarer. And even if we practice bhakti, we're not guaranteed that if I do so much years of service, then I get bhava. It is all up to the mercy of Krishna. Uh, so we can't uh, predict when we get bhava in terms of time. It's all dependent on the Supreme Lord. So the Supreme Lord does not like to give himself to everybody because he falls under their control. So only a person who's highly qualified will get to see the Lord, and that means attain the stage of Baba. And so it is up to the Supreme Lord, in that sense it is rare. So rare also means uh, it is not available to people who practice karma and jnana. So by karma you can go to Brahma Loka, Svarga Loka, and by jnana you can go to the person of Brahman. But those persons can never get Baba. Huh? Because they don't do bhakti. So in Prema, two qualities manifest. First quality is Sandrananda, Vishesh Atma, condensed bliss, spiritual bliss. Hmm? Uh, which is non-material. It is uh, the Fladini Shakti. Some the shakti of the Lord. Uh, so, of course, in um, Baba stage already, mukti was considered to be insignificant uh, because of the bliss of realizing the Lord. So, in prema, that bliss becomes sandrananda, very intense, this much more strong. Uh, so, therefore, liberation is completely rejected. So, if we compare the bliss, uh, the first little thing is the bliss in Brahman, little bit, Brahmananda. <laughs> then we have Bhava, which is much more. But then we have Prema, it is much, much more bliss, 100%. <laughs> so, the last quality is Krishna Akarshani attracts Krishna. So generally, Krishna means all attractive. Krishna attracts everybody else. But Krishna is attracted to bhakti. He's attracted to all types of bhakti. But he is particularly attracted to prema bhakti, and that's the purest type of bhakti. So uh, he is not, Krishna says, well, I can't be the Buddha, uh, I'm not attracted to yoga, dharma, and sankhya, and svajaya, study, and tapas, that is austerity. And renunciation as I am to bhakti. I cannot be attained by these processes only by bhakti. Uh, so in Prem Bhakti, the Lord falls under the control of the devotee. That's the sixth quality. Okay. So the qualities manifest in stages, in sadhana bhakti, the first two manifest. And uh, in bhava bhakti, the second two, and in rain bhakti, the third two, like that. So sadhana, we get two qualities, but those two qualities, of course, are manifested in bhava and in prema. And in bhava, of course, we get two extra qualities manifested. Those also continue in the prema. And then we have two extra qualities there. Black. It's supposed to be red. 
Uh, so at the end of this uh, uh, wave or chapter, uh, Rupa Goswami says, the qualification for understanding bhakti and of course this work in nectar devotion is ruchi or taste, not tarka or uh, argumentation and logic. Uh, so if one has a little taste for bhakti, he can understand uh, bhakti in this particular work, uh, but if he's simply a logician, then he will not understand it at all. Logic is insubstantial. A person more skillful of logic can bring about a conclusion different from what carefully proven previously by another skillful logician. In other words, you can make all sorts of logic and prove a point, and everyone accepts it. Next generation, somebody makes a new argument and defeats your thing, and then everybody accepts the new thing. And then a few hundred years later, somebody makes another argument, and they accept that one. So in this way, logic is upper to stop. It, in itself, it cannot come to a conclusion. Nevertheless, logic may be useful. Uh -huh. So we can use logic to understand about bhakti as long as it is a secondary process, not the main process. And uh, we can use logic, of course, also to convince others of the process of bhakti. Okay. That's the first chapter. Okay, now we're going to start on the bhakti. So we have the main definition. The main definition applies to all types of bhakti. That is sadhana bhakti, bhava bhakti, and prem bhakti. Uh, but then we have sub-definitions. So here's the definition of sadhana. So we have to keep the other definition in mind also. This is within that definition. So the definition Kriti Sadya Babat Sadya Bhava Sasadana Abhita Nitasindasa Bhava Sya Prakta Kriti Sadya the action of the sense produces a stage of Bhava is called Sadhana Bhakti. This attained state of Bhav, Bhakti or Sadyata is an eternal stai bhava which is not created but simply manifests within the soul by the spiritual energy of the Lord. So the main part of the statement is that engagement of the senses or action of the senses to attain bhava. So we use the senses in such a way that we go from sadhana to bhava. So uh, there are certain actions of the senses which are later given. Yeah? And this definition, of course, also includes Anukuna and Krishna and Siddhartha, etc. All that is included here also, because it's a sub-definition. Uh, so the um, second part of this definition is actually about bhava. One attains, through sadhana, we attain bhava. So normally, we attain something. Something is created at a certain point. But if we say bhava is created, then it's not eternal. And if it's not eternal, it's not spiritual. So therefore, what do we do with bhava? We do a sadhana to get bhava. What is that bhava? So here it says that bhava is nitya siddha. It's not created, it's eternal. It simply manifests within the heart at that particular time. So we don't create bhava at a certain point, but it manifests suddenly in the heart, or in the jiva. So, where is it eternal? It's eternal, obviously, in the spiritual world, with Krishna and his associates there. Yeah? So this bhava is actually a stai bhava, which is described in rasa in the second part of the book, for which we have shanta, smadasya, sakya, but so, it ends up so these bhavas are there and they're eternal in the spiritual world and they manifest within the jiva because of sadhana bhakti. Okay. So in other words, the process of sadhana does something so that the jiva gets the mercy by which part of the spiritual world manifests within at that point. 
So it's not the it's not created. It's something manifests from the spiritual world. So the important part of sadhana is to remember that it's all done with the senses. We use the different senses plus the inclination towards the Lord, Anukula and Krishna Sivanam. The result is we end up with bhava. So though the senses are material, by because of the inclination to work towards the Lord, which is in the jiva, we get a spiritual result. So that inclination or bhakti in the jiva actually is a spiritual aspect and using the senses that increases until it turns into bhava in the jiva. Okay, so this is the Nityasiddha Baba, for instance. <laughs> There's a Madhurya Baba, which is the Baba there. And in Baba stage, that will manifest within the Jiva, that particular type of Baba. It could be a Prasakti or anything else, but you know, we're just taking Madhurya as an instance. So, so by Sadhana, one attains Baba, in which that particular Baba will manifest from the spiritual world into the Jiva. So in sadhana we have two types. We have vaidhi, sadhana, which will lead to bhava, and we have raganuga, which will lead to bhava. Of course, if we can do vaidhi, then we can go to raganuga and go to bhava, either way. Anyway, these two types of sadhana are the types described here, distinct as sadhana. So vaidhi has this definition within sadhana bhakti, within the general definition. Where the action of bhakti arises not from attachment, attainment of attraction or raga, but from teachings of scripture, rules, or vidhi, it is called vaidhi bhakti. So the main element here is we do our activities because scripture tells us to do so. In raga, it is not because of that. It is because of attraction to the Lord that we do the service, or we chant, or whatever. Huh? So in Vaidhi Bhakti, we follow, uh, we do the activities, uh, Kriti Sadhya, because of scriptural injunctions. Dependence on the rules of scripture or the injunctions of scripture. That's called Vaidhi Bhakti. Vidhi is the root of the rule, and that becomes Vaidhi Bhakti. So, scriptures plus engage the senses according to the scriptures, plus we have our Anupin and Krishna Siddha and Bhakti, and that turns into Bala eventually. What is the qualification? Faith in serving the Lord. Rajata Shraddha. Makkara Adho. Uh, because of impressions arising from previous association with devotees. Uh, not Nirvana is not too detached and not too attached. Not Atisakta. In other words, he's not too much attracted to liberation and impersonalism and vairagya. And he's not too attached to material enjoyments. So that qualifies the person. Okay? So if we are too attached to material things, we're more inclined to karma yoga. If we're too detached, then we're more inclined to can yoga. So that's why I says not too detached, not too attached. Okay? So... Uh, Faith in scripture because of previous association. And we should have some detachment but without the impersonalism. So this is the qualification for Vaidhi Sadhana. Huh? So Vaidhi Sadhana, Vaidhi comes from the root Vidhi Vidhi means rules of scripture. Therefore, faith is in scripture. And because we have faith in the scripture, and then we begin the practice and we follow those rules. What are the types of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti? Highest is called the Uttama Bhakti. A person who is skillful in scripture and logic, completely firm in his belief with deep faith, Pranasraka, is considered qualified as Uttama. Uh, 